This is Lemons Car Spotting. You post to Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. We pick the hooptiest. They are so incredibly terrible. And which one we want to become a real Lemons build. It does car-like things. We've been pushing for one of those in Lemons too, and those are very affordable. It's Nick and Eric. This is Lemons Car Spotting. You guys know how it works. We got a couple of awards. I guess, I don't know how this works. I'm going to choose for you, Eric. I've got the Lemons build and the hooptiest here. Uh, close your eyes. Tell me when to stop. Stop. That's the hooptiest. <laughs> I'll do the Lemons build. Um, and I won't make any comments on your shirt. Uh, folks in the comment section can do that on your what, end. All right. What, what comment would you even make? <laughs> Is that a blend or is it a hundred percent cotton <laughs> all right let's get into it oh man it's a mini honda okay there are here's the thing about these mini hondas there's uh there are actually two versions there's a z600 and an n600 one was ostensibly the sedan the other one was ostensibly <laughs> the coupe and i believe this is the coupe making it the z600 is that right i think that's right I think so. Boy, uh, too small for lemons. Worth pointing that out. Although we had one before that rule was enacted. Uh, so, mm, boy. <laughs> yeah, we well, so we have had uh, a couple of these uh, N, N slash Z600s and lemons heavily modified, um, right, even right. when they were legal, heavily modified to meet our safety standards. Now, yeah, we, we introduced this 82 inch minimum wheelbase rule a while back because we don't want to see one of these get smushed by a Crown Vic. Um, <laughs> the cars that are still running grandfathered in, we've, we've you know, they've gone above and beyond the normal safety rules to make them legit despite their small size. Um, but we felt like uh, that was a path we didn't want to continue going down. Super cool car. Bring it on the Lemons Rally. Yep. 600 being the uh, displacement, I assume. I would assume so. Probably yeah. some kind of motorcycle-derived machine. I yeah. do like the uh, recessed door handle. That's a nice little touch on a tiny little uh, economy car. As well thought out as the recessed door handle is, is as badly as the rear hatch fits <laughs> into the body line. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Tupperware. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you remember a movie? There was some movie like 80s, 70s maybe, where there was one of these in a car race and the big gag was it could split in half and then little motorcycle handlebars came out of the glove compartment on the passenger <laughs> side and then they were able to drive away separately. That's no, a random but... memory that just popped into my mind. Um, there is, there's your Lemons Rally bit to do out <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. If you could make that bit happen, that's a big, big thing. And if you know what movie that is, post in the comments. All right. Here we go. But the I don't think we're in uh, Kansas anymore. Yeah, it's got to be an opal thingy. <laughs> we're back in Panama. Our friend Jake. Um, yeah, it's got to be an opal. Um, when was the last time you saw one of these, by the way? And I don't mean the truck. I mean the payphone on the wall. <laughs> the, the multiple payphone. <laughs> Interestingly, there is a public park very near my house that has a payphone, has two payphones, in fact, at either end. And there's a sign on it saying to not let your kids play with it because it's still like hooked up to something. And it raises so many questions. Um, I've never tried to pick it up to see who's on the other end but um it's not like an emergency phone like a lot, i know a lot of parks have those no um, it's a full-on just pay a pay phone, phone in a booth with the with the with the quarter thing maybe maybe they repurposed it as an emergency phone that would make uh, some know. amount of sense still <laughs> very strange uh anyway we're... as strange as uh yeah. what is it about god you know i feel bad for south america because like you know it's not like Germany is close to them. So, you know, if as long as you're bringing cars from far away, bring good ones from, you know, Japan or wherever. Yeah, I, Opal was big in Brazil. So I assume this came out of Brazil like most of the Opals did. And like the engines for some um, North American market GMs in the 80s. That's also right. Had Opal engines. Yeah. Uh, so I, I assume this was just... In Brazil, it's easier for them to make car-based trucks. And then, you know, 
it's easier for Opal to distribute them, you know, two countries away instead of shipping them. Yeah, fair enough. Um, also, just making mention and appreciation of the fact that uh, small compact car trucks are still a thing in Latin America. And we always talk about, I wish we had those. And then I don't think anybody would actually buy one, which is why they don't sell them to us. So uh, we have nobody to blame but ourselves, uh, much like everything else in the United States. All right, <laughs> let's move on. Oh, yeah. Look at uh, the Landau roof. On the New, New Yorker, Yorker land. You know, there's some thing that's especially bold about the body color land our roof yeah i mean like i sort of get like i don't know if you're if you're doing the land out in a contrasting color it's like you're making the double statement of like this is very intentionally like i think the the body colored like you know beige on beige landau is in a way an even more confident statement that's saying that i need this for me that's what it's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, boy, that's pretty good. Uh, Jet City Car Spotting, presumably Seattle. Um, yep. So uh, I don't know if we've seen a post from Jet City before. Thanks for the submission. Yep. Oh, oh yes. man, there it is. Ah, Nissan Pulsar. What was this called? The Sportback? Sportback with no C. Yeah. Right. That made it edgy and cool. Yep. Um, well, the whole idea with this was it came with two different tops, right? Yeah, there was a... Boy, it's like a... I don't know if you'd call it a notchback. That's like what it normally is, though. You know, some yeah. variation there. You can kind of see the body line. <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah. The, the C pillar. <laughs> and then you could get this kind of bolt-in, bolt-on... I don't know how it attaches. Yeah. But the sport back was an option you could add to it. Then makes it a totally sweet shooting brake, like a Ferrari, basically. Yeah, no, it's totally sweet. I, I mean, I guess I was all the always under the impression that you got both when you bought the one car and then had this giant thing that you had to like fit somewhere <laughs> yeah. at your house. Um, but maybe not. Maybe they all came with the regular thing, and then you had to be, you know, perusing the Nissan accessories catalog to get the super cool sport back. Yeah, I don't know how that worked from the dealership. We have had one of these race in lemons. It came from Canada, uh, and the guys street drove it in Toronto, parked in an underground uh, parking lot. They eventually lost that spot and gave the car away to somebody, and we haven't seen it in about mm. seven years. But it's out there somewhere and has the actual sport back. Which right. Is I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to do it. I yeah. guess the, the third option is to just run it with nothing. You know, right. like a uh, like an early Bronco or a Forerunner. Would you say like a small car based truck in that? In that <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, also, would like to point out the extremely excellent, very rad taillight treatment. Um, yeah, doesn't get better than that. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, these are roughly based on the B12 Sentra, I think. Okay, I think. All right. Somebody can correct me in the comments and also elucidate upon the uh, sport back availability. This one has a mismatched color, by the way. On the yeah. 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 Unlike the Landau. Right. All right. <laughs> Let's move on. Oh, man. See, this like seems like the kind of car that might have already gone on the Lemons Rally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the B body wagons are huge on that, and not they're also just you know huge. Uh, but yeah. this one, this is an Oldsmobile. Is, this is the rare one. This is the Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser, I think it is called. Uh -huh. uh, and it's so uh, it's the same thing as the Roadmaster and the Caprice wagon. Yeah, and I'm uh, pretty sure it's got a 305 Chevy. Oh no, man. So, you know, not a lot of motor for quite a lot of car. Yeah, but I think it is the sharpest looking of the three, which might be heresy to the uh, B-Body model. No, I, I yeah. totally agree. I think the little grill uh, adds a lot to it. This one in particular has some like, I don't know, they're like weld polished aluminum wheels with the raised white letter, some radial TAs on it, plus two-tone. It's a good look overall. Yeah, I like the two-tone a lot in it. Uh, like I said, they're... I don't think they sold very many of these. They're pretty rare as far as these things go. But yeah, you know, it's identical to a, a Roadmaster. So yeah. you could dress it up inside like a Roadmaster if you felt right. so inclined. 
there probably is some like happy medium where you get you know the lt1 which i guess was available in both the chevy and the buick but then the buick presumably had the nicest interior and then uh as mentioned the roadmaster is the best looking or uh, sorry the uh the custom cruiser oldsmobile is the best looking yeah, I believe they discontinued this before the LT1 was even an option. It was like uh -huh. one or two years only. I see. Well, Roadmaster Facts brought to you by us. That's right. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, God. Is it, are we in a roots group uh, I, zone here? Boy, like it a, looks like a Hillman or a... Yeah. Something like that. This is where we need uh, Lemons, uh, uh, friend of Lemons and uh, employee at West Coast Races, Armin Bengal, Sunbeam Alpine owner, who also knows every Roots group ever made. He would tell us what this is. Um, it's pretty snazzy, I must say. Yeah, it's got all the hallmarks of circa 1961 England, which is yeah. to say... Uh, five-year-old american designs in three-quarter scale but <laughs> boy three-quarter is pretty generous <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's hard to tell how small this actually is uh, yeah yeah uh, you know, most british cars from well full stop most british cars are clown car sized so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah this this yeah. could be seven feet long it's kind of right. hard to tell right right that's pretty excellent all right, that's from Detroit Wheels, spelled all snazzily. I wonder if this is in Detroit. I would, Interesting. I would think so. I like the uh, the uh, dog dish hubcaps on it, yeah. too, in the uh, yeah. color-matched everything, kind of white walls yeah. to match the yeah. paint. Yeah, it's got a whole 1950s uh, Mel's Diner thing happening, which actually kind of works on this. Yeah, what is the uh, English equivalent of Mel's Diner? <laughs> <by the laughs> That's way. a good question. Yeah, for our, for our fans in the UK, what is like the kitschy restaurant semi chain uh, harkening back to a time that never existed? Um, let us know in the comments. All it's right, probably Next medieval up. times. Oh man, <laughs> well, cheating a little bit by going to the junkyard, but we've got ourselves an early Corvair, a Fox, and a Morris Minor. Among other things, yeah, boy. I mean, how deep do you want to dive into this? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a J body in the back, and yeah, Grand Prix, Grand Prix. I, I don't know why I don't call it a Grand Prix, like a kind of <laughs> Grand American. Prix, Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. rusty behind what might be. Boy, I don't know what that is. The white, yeah, the red, the, the fully surface rust thing. I thought, yeah, I mean, it's another 60s American sedan of some sort yeah um well we have seen all of these in lemons with the exception of the morris minor so you know what the uh the assignment is there <laughs> that's right uh the uh mustang looks to have been circle track raced or there's something going on with yeah, you're right. The teal piping there. I don't know if that is the normal roll cage, if it's a demo derby setup. Yeah, it's kind of a weird. It, to tell. <laughs> it looks like it only, you know, it, it immediately surrounds the driver, uh, yeah. thereby creating no room, you know, until you smack your body parts against the uh, probably uh, plumber's pipe. Um, material that's being made. Either that or it's just like a rack that's been stored inside of this car. Entirely possible. We would love to see a Morris Minor, though. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. All right, next up. What the? It's it, a hell of a photo, by the way. Yeah, the, uh, it's got a lot of things. I mean, for, for shooting sideways on a, on a freeway, apparently, yeah. um, <laughs> That's a neat photo and a neat car with a neat art. I can't even tell what it is. Is it a Maverick? E, it looks like a Maverick or an AMC of some kind, like a yeah. Hornet maybe. Uh-huh. Um, well, in any case, it's a, uh, a kind of a neat art car thing happening. Um, yeah, I like it. It's a art. It's a art. All right, next up. Oh, man, it's an RX-2. Is it an RX-2? I'd have to see the front. I think it's an RX-2. Um, 
yeah, these things, obviously, early Mazda rotary um, didn't work at all because rotary, uh, but now have a cult following because rotary. Yeah, boy, file this one under cars Eric has never seen in real life. Um, yeah, just not a car that was ever sold in the Midwest or bought as far as I know. I mean, I've certainly never seen one or haven't seen one, God, yeah, or or ever seen one outside of some kind of an enthusiast event, you know? I mean, out here at a Cars and Coffee or Vintage Rally or whatever, you'll see these. But, yeah, just driving around like somebody's little weekend car, nope. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just don't exist. Um, you know, weirdly, uh, speaking of Latin America, these these are big in Puerto Rico, especially yeah. like there's a big rotary drag racing scene there. And I'd love for somebody to explain that. Like, yeah. did Mazda just have a huge presence there? I mean, it seems like the kind of place that I mean, it's an island. Like yeah. once you run out of stuff, it's harder to get more stuff. And why would some of that stuff be Mazda rotary parts from the 70s? I don't know. Yeah, maybe they just sold all of the uh, REPUs, the Riku, yeah. in, uh, right. that was the work truck in Puerto Rico. I don't know. So yeah. if you're in Puerto Rico, you probably know better than we do. Yes, yeah. Us, yeah. Explain to us the, uh, the, uh, the, the affinity for uh, rotaries in Puerto Rico. Actually, noted uh, rotary owner um, in Puerto Rico is former Major League pitcher Jonathan Sanchez, who drag races a first-gen um Mazda RX-7 that says no hitter on the side because he pitched no hitter <laughs> with the Giants. <laughs> That's amazing. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I, I know the hot setup with the rotary is the starlet because what you really yeah. want when your rotary is making 700 horsepower is yeah. to have it on a wheelbase of about 84 inches. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want it to be really short and narrow um, yeah. and have tons of power. Suzuki Samurais, they, they'll they do that down there too. Put the 700 horsepower <laughs> Turbo 13B into a Samurai, which adds height along right. with the shortness and narrowness of a Starlet. So um, it's pretty much good all around. Yep, <laughs> yep. By the way, I feel like there was an RX-2 or RX-3 that was used in endurance racing in the IMSA series in the seventies that yeah. they did the smart thing and they took the rotary and threw it the hell out and put in like a basic four cylinder engine. Yeah. And that was just what they used to race with because the rotary was trash. Yeah. Um, if you know about that also, just check that in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, indeed. All right. Last for the week. Oh, the uh, sprint spectrum. Sprint. sprint man yeah. um the predecessor to the geo metro yeah uh which was both of which were suzuki's of some flavor i think i don't god we were just talking to judge phil about this you know judge phil in addition to his love of korean cars has a love for orphan brands suzuki being obviously one of them and then being you know a rebadged suzuki that's a chevy is even better in his book uh, constantly <laughs> talks about the spectrum and doesn't own a spectrum, mind you. But uh, right. Anyway, I mean, I feel like well, we've talked about this before. Like of all of the American market kind of super subcompact cars of the '80s and '90s, the Festiva we consider to be the best as uh, experts of such things, which was some right. kind of weird Ford Mazda Kia joint venture. Um, Gotta feel like the Sprint and Metro were next best. Um, Suzuki being generally okay as a motorcycle brand, which maybe rubs right. off a little. Right. Um, and then I don't did Chrysler have something in this arena? I mean, I know they had like Colts and stuff, but those were bigger slightly. Uh, you know, the, I, I recently learned that Plymouth sold the Horizon until 1990, so that kind of falls in there. Kind of falls um, in, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's still maybe one slot above in size. Maybe it's one of those things where that market 
was very briefly hot and Chrysler was so slow to react that it actually did them the favor of uh, uh, being too late and then it was dead by the time that they would have done anything about it. So that um, sounds about right. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the beauty of the horizon being sold in 1990 is that it was basically a 1968 Talbot. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. Right. Uh, nothing like being on time, which I was thinking the other day about this car in the Metro. And really, the last time General Motors designed their own economy car was the Vega. Literally, everything else has been a captive import, including the Chevette, which was an Opal. Uh, and then everything post Geo Metro was yeah. all day woo. So. I, you know, I, even the Cavalier. No, the Cavalier is... Uh, That's an oval, maybe. It's a compact. Yeah, uh, yeah. oh yeah, it's, you're it's, right. It's never yeah, been yeah. like the very bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I know, yeah, like, so Aveo, Spark, et cetera, that, that yeah. segment. Uh, yeah, you're totally right. Um, and, you know, I have mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, if you make the Vega and then decide to never do that <laughs> ever again, I totally understand it. Right. But, right. On the other hand, like... You know, we've all done something stupid. You know, we've been on a bad date or whatever. And then like, I mean, I guess unless you're me, you've, you've also said like, ah, maybe I should go on another one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I, I can sort of see the, both sides of that. Yeah, um, boy. All right. Well, uh, before we move on, there's one other thing to point out about this is that it appears and I'm not totally sure, but it appears that this car is in somebody's basement. That's hmm. really what it looks like. Maybe it's like that. Ooh, yeah, you're right. It doesn't look <laughs> like there's a way in or out of there. <laughs> <laughs> How did it get here? <laughs> it's Imagine yourself in a small automobile. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like that guy who, who made his own replica of a Lamborghini Countach, and then it was totally... Uh, imprisoned in his basement, he had to cut a, a hole in the side of his house to extricate it. Yeah, um, yeah. boy, yeah, that anyway. is possible. Uh, cool. All right, well, uh, shall we get into some awards? Yeah, you know, I very cleverly only wrote down uh, six of these because <laughs> I uh, was not paying attention for the first yeah, half. Yeah, that's fine. Never... I think I, I'm I... missing one. I only have nine written down. There's one missing in there somewhere. Uh, we're. Uh... On top of it, doing our jobs <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, yeah. But uh, of the ones I have written down, I'm going to go to the uh, slightly cheating and go back to the junkyard and point okay. out the Morris Minor. <laughs> uh, because, yeah. well, I mean, there's just a lot of things happening here. The yeah. one thing, you know, Corvair, fine. Corvair with a bullet hole, nonetheless. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Morris Minor, you kind of expect both those cars to be in that condition. But, you know, when a Mustang shows up, you know, there is occasionally the person who is very upset that a car <laughs> that they made literally three million of has shown up in Lemons. Right. And, you know, that car should be saved. Well, here it is. Go save it. There is a car <laughs> sitting here doing yeah. absolutely nothing and is about to be crushed or will sit here right, and decay right. into the earth for the next 15 yeah. years. So, Well, You're this is where I have to interject the, uh, the, the standard response for the person who says, you know, why you ruin classic? Um, and then they are met with the challenge and response of, okay, here is one, go save it. I have to uh, share the traditional response, which is it is on the other side of the country. Otherwise, I would. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, very hoopty, very hoopty scene. Uh, thought about that for the Lemons build because we have never seen a Morris Minor in right. Lemons, uh, but we've also never seen a whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, imagine this thing in a road race. Uh, it also looks semi-abandoned, maybe not as abandoned as the Morris Minor. So, um, you know, it's intact, but also not going anywhere. So perfect candidate to turn into a race car. Imagine how cool this would be. Yep. hundred percent agree with that. Uh, put a cage in it. I'm sure there are actually no speed parts you could put in it to make it go faster. Um, so yeah. That, yeah. That's yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. it. And, and there's also a loophole. If you want to put a Miata drivetrain in it, we will not give you any penalty laps for that. So, um, you know, it's a loophole. Yep. Totally fine, man. 
There it is. Yep. Tillman Minx, something like that. I don't Some know. kind of something. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> uh, keep up the great submissions on Instagram with the tag Lemons Car Spotting. Um, we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah. Definitely don't change the outside. Oh, yeah. A couple of numbers. Good to go.